It happened not too long ago. It was like 4.30 a.m. And as usual, I had had a long day of work the day before. I was exhausted. All of the sudden, a vision or a dream, I couldn't tell which one was this phenomenon going on in front of me. I'm in an office. Walls are kind of bluish. I have my back against the wall. I do not remember what kind of clothing I was wearing at that time, or shoes, or if I was wearing my watch, or if I had short hair, long, medium, and even worse, I couldn't distinguish if it was whether morning or afternoon time. However, I know for a fact that it was daylight. Since through a window at the other extreme of the office, a light was coming in, flashing up the room, the office. I do not remember what else was located to my right. I believe it was some kind of furniture, like a waiting room, probably a carpet, not sure about that. Books, I don't know, but there was something else in that office. In front of me and also against the wall, I mean the wall facing me, a guy in his late thirties. He was looking at me with such an intensity that I had no doubt that whatever was going to happen was not going to have a good outcome. He was angry at me. He wanted to talk to me but chose not to. He was very sad about me. Disappointed. Very disappointed. Sometimes he would close his eyes and get back to me. Only his eyes were in motion, not the rest of his face, which I had no access to. Seems like it was covered. I mean, his nose and mouth were blocked to me. And he knew that I wanted to see him completely, but he wouldn't let me. I was terrified. I knew that he was up to no good. I realized who he was. He knew that I knew who I was dealing with. So it became more intense, more frightening since I was about to get judged by the creator of the universe. Me, yes me, the one who has been living a wasteful life. I was expecting the worst. What really got my attention was what he was doing, besides looking at me straight to my eyes. He was pacing with his right foot. He would take it forward and move it backwards, forward, backwards, back and forth, and that made me feel more uncomfortable. He never took a step towards me. Never. He just paced. To his right and to my left, there was a desk, and I do remember that there were some books, office stuff, probably a stand for pencils and pens. I'm not sure, but books for sure. Not too many, probably two or three, not even four of them. And there was a chair, which I don't remember what kind of chair it was, nor what kind of desk was it, and even worse, what was I doing in an unknown office? A place where I have never been before, but a place that I felt was mine, or at least I was working for that company, or an office that I had been appointed to, anyway. The desk was not a large, I would say it was a five foot wide, it was a wooden desk, Dark color, probably brownish, not sure. Probably blackish, no really sure about that, but had a sort of crystal on top of it. One of those desks from the 80s. There was nobody else in the office, but I had the feeling that there were people outside the office. Mostly people who worked at the very same building or something related to that particular office. He would keep looking at me, and I don't know for how long. I would say our encounter lasted at least a good 15 minutes. He was very sad about me and preoccupied, very concerned about my lifestyle, mostly my love for beer. I believe that he was concerned about that. I knew he was the very same Jesus. He knew that I knew. We both knew what was going on. He wanted to talk to me, but he knew that I wouldn't listen. That's the reason he chose not to open his mouth. Since he knew that I knew who he was, he realized that I was extremely disappointed to finally find out that he was Caucasian. I was in shock. I mean, a Jewish immigrant founded and established my family in South America, but not only I'm Roman Catholic, but I'm a Hispanic man. I was not expecting Jesus to be Caucasian, for God's sake. Give us a break. He was wearing a rope, and guess what? A tight rope, a two-piece rope, a thick one. And this particular detail got my attention. The top of his rope would fall to his waist, and he was not wearing a sash. His rope was gray and had beautiful horizontal colors being sewed across the whole fabric. His sleeves would go down and stop probably four inches before his wrists. They were a little bit open, but not too much. The horizontal colors were mostly orange and yellow, but the thick fabric would remain gray in his entirety. The fabric was very cool. He didn't have any holes in his hands nor on his feet. His skirt would go from his waist all the way down to probably five inches before his ankles. And it was not precisely a wide skirt, but kind of tight. 